Welcome back for day four of our quadratics unit. Our goal for today, given a quadratic word problem with consecutive integers, you will be able to write a let statement, set up an equation, solve, and find both sets of solutions. So there's going to be two sets of solutions here. All right, so the goal for today is we are going to be working with consecutive integers, which we did talk about at the beginning of the school year, but here's just a little bit of a review. So a consecutive integer, and these are going to be integers that occur in order. So an example here, I could say, well, let's start at the number 5. So the next consecutive integer would be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So 5 would be your first consecutive integer, 6 would be your second, and so on and so forth. Okay, we could also have consecutive even and consecutive odd integers. Okay, so let's say you wanted consecutive even integers. You would pick an even integer, so let's say we wanted to start with 12. The next even integer would be 14, and the next even integer would be 16. If we wanted to talk about consecutive odd numbers, so you would pick an odd number, any odd number, so let's pick 7. So the next odd number would be 9, and then 11, and then 13. Those would be consecutive. So to set up a word problem, what we have to do is we have to figure out let statements that will allow you to do that. So for consecutive integers, we use let x equal the first consecutive integer, let x plus 1 equal the second number, let x plus 2 equal the third number, and x plus 3 equals the fourth number. Because every time you go up, you're only adding 1 onto the previous number. So you're going to add 1 on each time. Now consecutive even and odd are a little bit different because if you take a look, how many numbers are you, or what are you adding to 12 to get to 14? You're adding 2. So if the first number is x, the second number is x plus 2. If you look at the odd numbers, if you start with 7, how many do you have to add to get to 9? You have to add 2 to get to 9. So you have to go x, x plus 2, x plus 4, x plus 6. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's try this out. The product of two consecutive integers is 56. Find the integers. Okay, so a couple key words here. We see that we have the word product. Okay, so the word product means we're going to multiply. So that's going to be our key word here. But now we have to look to see, well, how do we want to set up our let statements? And this is how we're going to do it. It says two consecutive integers. So consecutive, this is regular consecutive, so I'm going to go over to this box, so we're going to use x and x plus 1 because there's 2. So I'm going to say let x equal the first number. I'm going to use the number symbol. And then let x plus 1, and this is a binomial, so a binomial is a quantity. Quantities go into parentheses, equals the second number. <clears throat> okay, so let's reread the problem. The product, which we know means multiply, of two consecutive integers, the word is means equals. Find the integers. Okay, so we know we're going to multiply and we're going to set it equal to 56. x times x plus 1 equals 56. All right, now what we have to do is just set it up, at, or uh, go ahead, we're going to distribute and solve. So x times x x squared, x times 1, x equals 56. Now x is raised to the second power. If x is raised to the second power, that means there's two answers. If there's two answers, we have to set the whole thing equal to 0. So I'm going to transpose the 56 to the other side. x squared plus x minus 56 equals 0. So now I'm going to factor and solve. So this is going to be x plus 8 and x minus 7. Okay, we tee it up. Now remember our little trick here. So if it's a plus 8 to transpose it, it becomes negative 8. Here if it's x minus 7, when we transpose it, it becomes positive 7. So we found our two x values, but remember, we weren't finding just one number. We were finding two numbers. So if your first number is negative 8, what will your second number be, which is x plus 2? So that would be negative 8 plus 1 
which would give us negative 7. Over here, if your first number is 7, your second number is x plus 1, so 7 plus 1 is 8. So your two sets of answers would be negative 8, negative 7, or positive 7, positive 8, because both of those would multiply to a positive 56, and you've got it. Okay, so let's jump down now to number 2. So find three positive consecutive even integers such that the product of the first and the second is 8 more than 38 times the third. Okay, this sounds a little confusing, so let's just start at the very beginning. Write your let statements. Find three positive consecutive even integers. So we want three consecutive even integers. So right there is the word even, so we're going to use these let statements right here. And we need three of them. So the first one is going to be let x equal the first number. Then we're going to say let x plus 2 equal your second number. And again, we're going to put this in parentheses because it's a binomial. And let x plus 4 equal your third number. Okay, now we're going to read the question one more time, and we're going to try to change the words into an equation. Okay, such that. That just means they're going to explain to you what you have to write. The product. So we know product means we're going to multiply. Of. So what are we going to multiply? The first and the second. Okay, so the first and the second number we're going to multiply. So that's x and x plus 2. Now we have the word is. The word is means equals. So now I'm going to put in equals. 8 more. So more means we're going to add. So we're going to add 8 to something, but what are we going to add it to? 38 times the third. So 38 times the third number, which we know is going to be x plus 4, and then we need 8 more. Okay, so this is our equation. We took the words and transposed it into an equation. So now what we have to do is go ahead and solve. x squared plus 2x equals 38x plus 38 times 4 we get 152 plus 8. So now I'm going to combine these terms because they're common terms. They are like terms. All right, and then I notice that my x is being squared. If x is squared, there's two answers. If there's two answers, we set the whole thing equal to 0. Now, I remember that I want my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to bring both of these to the other side. So minus 38x is going to go underneath the x. And then I'm also going to subtract 160. So both of those will cancel. So now we have x squared. Now 2 minus 38 is going to give me a negative 36x minus 160 equals 0. Okay, so now we have to think of two numbers that are going to multiply to negative 160 and add to a negative 36. I'm going to go negative 160 divided by 4, and I'm going to get 40. So negative 40 plus 4 gives me negative 36. So it's going to be x minus 40 and x plus 4, and I'm going to tee it up then. And we're going to get x is equal to 40 and x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so now we have to find, because these are sets of solutions, I need to find my other two numbers. So here I'm going to add 2 to both of these. So here we're going to go 40 plus 2 is 42. I'm going to add 2 more, and we're going to get 44. Over here, then, we have to do the same. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. All right, but now if I go back up here, it says find three positive. So they only want the positive set this time. So I'm going to take the negatives, cross them out, and omit. And we've got it. All right, so let's go ahead and flip the page.
Okay, and let's take a look at number three here. So find two consecutive negative integers such that the square of the first decreased by 17 equals four times the second. Now that sounds confusing, but let's break it down and it's actually rather easy. Find two consecutive negative integers. So two consecutive negative. So they don't want even or odd, they want regular. So this is just gonna be let x equal your first number and let x plus one equal your second number. Now we're gonna take the rest of this statement and we're gonna transpose it into an equation such that the square of the first, the square of the first, so the first number is x, so we're gonna square it, x squared. Now the word decreased, that means you're going to subtract, so minus, what are we going to subtract? 17. Then we have the word equals, equals, 4 times the second. So 4 times the second number is going to be 4 times x plus 1, which is a binomial, so we're going to put it in parentheses. And with this, it's pretty easy to see now that you would just solve. You'd have your two answers. And this time, we're going to omit the positives because they said negatives. So let's go ahead real quick and solve this one. So x squared minus 17 equals 4x plus 4. Now I want my x squared to be positive, so I'm going to transpose both the 4x and the 4 to the other side. So I'm going to get x squared minus 4x, and then negative 17 minus 4 is negative 21. Now we have to think of two numbers that multiply to negative 7, or negative 21, and add to negative 4. So it's x minus 7 and x plus 3, and then we tee it up. So we get x is equal to positive 7, and x is equal to negative 3. So now we have to find our second number, x plus 1, gives us 8 and x plus one over here is gonna give us negative two. But now if we go back to our question, they only wanted the negatives. So we're gonna omit the positives. So our final answer here is negative three and negative two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna skip number four. What I'd like you all to do right now is go to the next page for video four, and I'd like you to try the next three questions. Have a great night, everybody.